Thanks. I'm glad to be here to share the librarian perspective with you. Um, and I was asked to share some of the so-called pain points. Um, I'll start by just sharing a little bit about our campus because we're not the kind of place where we have, um, you know, our own information services people at our library. We are a very small residential liberal arts college in a rural area. We're in Oskaloosa, Iowa. We have about 1,200 students, and we do support some distance learning programs um, here on our campus. Um, and then, of course, this spring, all of our students became distance learners, whether they wanted to or not. So we had that going on. Um, and we have two librarians, and we have three paraprofessional staff so a very small college and very small staff here so um, one of the pain points with um, trying to authenticate uh, users to our databases and library services when um, before we had um, open athens was we were trying to maintain an easy proxy server and we were coordinating with information services. Um, and our information services folks are great. We have a great relationship with them. So I'm not saying anything disparaging against those folks, but they are also a very, very small staff over there. So um, every year, it, you know, it's a two way street when you're trying to maintain an easy proxy server we would need to give them a list of new databases to add and a list of old databases to remove that we no longer subscribe to so we would be giving them you know a lot of work to do and then we would also be relying on them to get some um, ip ranges to add and there would you know inevitably be a breakdown in that uh that work um and you know you find out about that when one of those things hasn't happened um and you know like i said they have a small staff they've got to be adding you know 500 new students ids to their system so maybe you know their person doesn't add the one of the ip ranges and then our students can't authenticate to a database and then we've got students calling us and saying that they couldn't get to a database and then you know that's just bad customer service so that was always happening you know at the beginning of every semester and you know it's the busiest time of the year for all libraries and everyone would be rushing around trying to to fix these problems on both sides so it's a lot of work for the information services folks it's a lot of work for the library to maintain that server um, and you know nobody was really happy with with that uh, with that process another thing um, that is kind of a well, it is integral to it, is the, the lack of usage statistics. Um, we could find out really from information services how many people were turned away from the service. Uh, they would, if, but I would have to contact them and say, you know, what's going on? And they would usually tell me these people aren't entering their ID correctly, which, isn't the most useful stat to get you're just getting you know people that aren't doing something correctly but you know when you log in to say your ebsco admin dashboard you get stats like a number of sessions or students did 300,000 searches which you know that's good you know people are using it a lot but eventually you're kind of having the thoughts you want to know well how many actual people are doing that but you're not you're not getting that stat 
out of that. And that's something that would be useful for us to have. We want to know how many actual people are authenticating or when was the last time somebody actually logged in. We would like to know that, um, or at least I, I am as a librarian, I'm curious about that. But we couldn't get to that kind of information. So, you know, that's definitely um, something that we would like to know, but we're just not able to get with an easy proxy server. Um, we are also experiencing a lot of confusion and frustration for users or students. Um, we did not have a single sign on service. So there was multiple login screen students had a different looking screen for their email. They had a different looking screen to log in to Moodle. We had another place where students went to check their grades and it looked different. Uh, that um, was, you know, really bad service and um, you would hear students complain about it a lot. You know, why do I have to log in multiple times every time I sit down at a computer? Because they'd want to be doing all of those different things and just logging in time after time. And none of us like that experience. It's a bad experience. Um, and the other thing is that it was just not intuitive when people sat down to do those things. Um, I would all the time I would get calls from students that would want to do something easy like log in to go search EBSCO and when they got to that easy proxy screen it would just baffle them. They would get there and not want, know what to do so they would back out of it and when I would take the call I would say well what you know, what did you try to do? Um, but instead of going in and, and entering their username and password, they would say, well, I went to ebsco.com, you know, which is the very last thing that they should have done. They should have continued on with their username and password, but it just does not look right to them um, because there's no branding or anything that tells them what they should be doing. We, IP addresses also, um, do something um, really bad. It ties students to the place where they are and our students don't stay in the place where they need to be um, to use our services. As I mentioned, we have a lot of distance students. Um, one of our groups of students that we recruit from um, are in an education program and they are all distance students and we recruit them from schools, they're paraeducators. So they will do a lot of their homework from different schools. And we work with the state library, like a lot of um, academic libraries will do. So when we had an easy proxy server, for example, um, our contract was with the state library, was with EBSCO. So we would buy a lot of, EBS, we had a lot of EBSCO databases that were free from the state library, but then we would buy additional more academic databases from the state library. But since the school library also had EBSCO databases and those were authenticated by the IP address at the school, the students then could not sign into the easy proxy service and get to the more academic databases because that school's IP address was taking over the service and the students were tied there. And then that would also cause me problems too because I teach sometimes from, I'll go to a public library and teach a distance class and then I can't teach a live demo and use one of those academic databases and I couldn't sign into the easy proxy and do a demo because I was tied to the IP address. And this is just really inexplicable to students to try to explain that you can't use our databases because you can only access things by an IP address. So a real pain point there to not even be able to use databases that we're paying for because of where you're physically at. 
So once we had um, Open Athens, the Federated Access Solution, it solved so many of these problems for us. Um, we had intuitive screens that had our campus branding. Um, now, when students sign into their, it looks just like they're signing into their email or their Moodle, the exact same screen. Um, or if they're off campus, they just find that campus branding, they know what to do. I have not had anyone try to back out and say, oh, I'm going to ebsco.com or something else and, and try to do something that doesn't happen. It's very intuitive and they just sign in. It looks exactly the same. It eliminates that whole issue. Um, it, we also have eliminated that coordination with information services, which um, I know that they're very grateful for. Um, we work directly with Open Athens to set up any new service or any new database that we purchase, and they get it all set up for us, which is so nice um, to just, you know, be able to put in a ticket or send an email and get that all done and not try to go into a database, enter, you know, five or six IP ranges that we have. Uh, there's none of that problem or issue. And then uh, the usage statistics are also great to be able to go in and see um, the patterns that are happening with our usage, especially this spring with um, the COVID issue, um, when our administrators were worried about, you know, what is going on with library usage, um, you know, if people are going to have to work from home, are you all still going to be able to work and are students doing work? I was able to very easily show our administrators that yes, our patterns are be, are consistent with last year's patterns. I can see what students are doing. The traffic patterns have changed from, you know, an off-campus use, or have switched from being off-campus, you know, but I can still see that it's the same pattern of usage as the previous year. It's been great that way, um, but we're very happy. It's been super easy. Um, and I can say that uh, I'm a very new director. This is my second year. Um, when we set up Open Athens, um, it was my first year as director and I was interim. We, I, my old position hadn't been backfilled. So I was setting it up on my own and it could not have been easier.